Hello everyone, welcome to my page and thank you for watching my video again, this time covering the 2016 Ross Telecom Cup competition, also known as Cup of Russia. And I have a special guest, my friend Kanishka is here with me. Hey Kanishka. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing well, what a competition this was. So I know, thank you so much for being so willing to jump on and do a video with me really quickly because I feel like two minds are always better than one, especially when we start the recap right after the competition. Exactly, everything that's fresh in the mind is always the best. So. Okay, so what's most fresh in our mind is probably the ladies competition, wouldn't you say? Definitely, and that was very, very, interesting how it went down so absolutely um there were definitely some good points definitely with the gold medal winner here Anna Pogorelaya so I'm not sure if you know this but I have a new girl a new Russian girl and her name is Anna I've liked her for so long but she was never this consistent and she had those very catastrophic falls that hurt to just look at but she's been pretty consistent lately and this I think would have to be one of her best performances to date. I enjoyed watching both of her programs here at Ross Telecom Cup then at Worlds in Boston. What do you make of her performances here? I thought it was great because this time last year we were talking about those like those falls mm -hmm. more than anything else and then it seems like Winning a bronze medal at the World Championships this past year has given her a new confidence. And I've always liked Anna more than the other Russian ladies, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, she has womanly jumps, like, and I just find her very appealing on the ice. So to see her pull two great performances here, I think she is my favorite Russian as well. So... Absolutely. She's also gaining respect from the judges, which is nice to see. And her actual skating, the core of her skating is very enjoyable to watch. I like her long limbs, her lines, her jump technique is very good and solid. Interesting entrance into her LUTs, but it helps her stay on the outside edge. Um, I'd say she definitely won this competition by landing all of her jumps, being completely clean in the long program. Uh, brought her, you know, secret weapon, the triple Lutz, triple toe combination. I feel like the other ladies now have to chase Anna as well as Evgenia. Yeah, and she won by a quite a big of a margin, 20 point difference, so. Absolutely. And who was in second place? It was teammate Radionova. Elena Radionova. Yes. She barely hung on to the silver medal, actually. Yeah, I was not impressed by Elena, like, as far as my fantasy skating went, I thought maybe Radio Nova will be able to deliver here because she usually delivers very well in Russia. But she was a, I won't say a hot mess, but she made several mistakes. And I felt like she was a little bit gifted by the judges in the long program. 123, I believe. It was a little too much, in yeah. my opinion. She had a fall. And then, you know, she's known for being gritty with her landing. So she sticks them out, she makes the rotation, but they're not pleasant to look at. So I would imagine that most of them receive minus GOEs. And I think that the program component marks should reflect that. I personally probably would have had her third here considering how much of a, a breakthrough Courtney Hicks made in the free program. Exactly, at least third in the free skate and I would not have complained even if she was second overall but the fact that she actually came in second in the long program to play second overall, that was a little questionable but hey, sometimes you have that home home country soil PCS boost so yeah, that's can't right. complain too heavily. At least her PCS was quite a bit lower in the long program compared to Anna. So I'm looking at the protocols here. Anna had a 70 for PCS and Elena had a 66. So I wish it was lower, but at least it's a chunk lower than Anna. And then what I was going to say, did you like her long program music? Did you like that choice? It was an unexpected choice just because <laughs> we've heard this music so often in skating. And for her particularly, I was hoping something a little bit more spunky because she has that kind of like gritty personality. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, her coach and team is not picking music that is more in favor of her. So 
I didn't like it as much. Yeah, I think honestly. it's too early in her career to skate to something as iconic and big as this piece of music. So we'll yeah. see how how she does with that later on in the season. I hope the best for her. Like I wish all the skaters well. It's just uh, it almost has like a almost that piece of music almost has like a farewell kind of theme to it. Like Shizuka Arakawa skated to it at mm -hmm. the Olympics, and yeah, at this stage in her career, I still think that there's better music out there for her, but. Absolutely. I think one other note to make about Elena Radionova that I had is um, when she first came on the scene as a senior, you know, she did not have the best skating skills. Her posture was not great, but she was a little shorter and she had a little bit of more a uh, little girl image. So we thought it was cute. And last year, that cuteness went away because she had the growth spurt. I feel like her skating is less sloppy, but still not clean and smooth if that makes sense so she's getting better but i need to see more of an improvement in basic skating skills yeah this program is far better than her titanic free skate from last oh, season oh gosh <laughs> and i also appreciate that she does the white skates i i have to say that like that's always very appealing when a lady wears their white skates then again, I was a Michelle Kwan fan, so of course I, I love white skates. So, <laughs> um, but overall, this program was better than last season. But I guess we'll see exactly how much this program can grow as the season goes on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and another skater who I want to see her programs grow later on throughout the season would be Courtney Hicks of the United States, who surprisingly won the bronze medal here. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people were expecting her to win a bronze medal at all. Mm -mm. Um, but I'm proud of her because she came out in the short program and did her all her jumps without the three turn that she usually has a bad habit with. Exactly. So, so I was very proud of her for that. And then when she came out for the long program, she was good, but I still wasn't 100% sure whether she would get a medal just because sometimes they, the judges hold her back on her PCS. Mm -hmm. But this should be a confidence boost for her. Um, t the judges are telling that, telling her and her team that if she can hold it together, they don't mind rewarding her. So, Absolutely. I think, as you said, a big accomplishment for Courtney here was to do a triple-triple combination without the three turns in the middle. Because that was starting to become a really bad habit. Like, I almost thought that. Was it Ashley Wagner's two-foot landings where you just, is it too late yeah. to fix? But, you know, it's good to see those gone. And she, the good thing about her jumps is that they're so high and powerful that she rarely under rotates. Instead, she has the opposite problem of maybe over rotating. Um, yep. Did I say over rate over rotate last time? So she doesn't under rotate. Instead, she doesn't under -rotate. She over rotate sometimes, which makes the landings kind of wonky. Um, I will say, I when Courtney's jumps are clean. I'm sold on her more as an athletic skater. The problem is that in the past, the jumps aren't clean, so I, I and I don't think the artistry is always there. So I'm not always on board with what her team is trying to um, do with her uh, skating image. But when she's clean, it makes sense to me. You know, maybe some more changes, some more intricacies to her choreography, and she'll be ready to fight for a podium spot at U.S. Nationals. I think so. She's always been in the crust of getting to that top group. So, mm -hmm. especially this season, I think that the game is open for anybody. Mariah Bell, just a few weeks back at Skate America, coming on very strong. It should be quite the battle at yeah. U.S. Nationals. And we have to think about who's who won't be at Nationals. Paulina, maybe, will be returning from an injury, so she won't be at her peak. Who knows how Mariah Nagasu is going to do. Um, that's going to be an interesting event this year. Definitely. Do you think that Courtney can make the Grand Prix final? It's going to be so difficult, but I have my hopes up. It's possible, especially because we tend to get at least two ladies to the Grand Prix final. And most often we would think it would be Ashley Wagner and Gracie Gold. But unfortunately, Gracie did not perform very well at Skate America, which mm -hmm. kind of makes her chances a little bit tough. Mm -hmm. So. If a Gracie, uh, if a Courtney Hicks, sorry about that. If Courtney Hicks can deliver another two great programs, who knows? Who knows what Courtney Hicks can do, really? Absolutely. And in the seasons past, at least for the ladies, 
we're at the halfway mark now, right? This is the third Grand Prix event. There's three more to go. We can start kind of thinking about who can make the Grand Prix final in December. It was a little more clear cut in the past few seasons. This season, that's totally not the case with Gracie Gold being fifth at Skate America, Caitlin Osmond winning the silver medal at Skate Canada. Who knows? It actually makes it exciting. It's like nerve wracking, but exciting at the same time. It's going to be really close to um, determine who takes the last few spots. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Absolutely. Who do we discuss next? Uh, fourth place finisher was Chinese skater Zijun Li. Um, and I think this was a good competition for her as well. She was relatively clean, stayed on her feet, loved both of her programs, and she's such a beautiful skater. It's nice to see her not sabotage herself with the jumps. The only critique I had for her is that um, she needs to um, be a little bit more powerful with her skating um, and maybe have a little bit more spark like she enjoys it, maybe add a little bit more passion. But what I saw today was really good from her. It's a big improvement for sure. And she actually has a new coach, um, Alexei Mishin, who's a um, well-known oh. Russian coach, mm -hmm. who's very um, good at technique. Because Evgeny Plashenko, like, at his age, is still doing beautiful triple axles. That's so, ridiculous, but that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so if he can continue to help her master her technique, she'll definitely be doing better in the future for sure. So, And I remember, like, 2015 Worlds, like, she was in such great contention, but we were fighting for three spots, and I was like, fall, fall, fall. <laughs> but... Um, now she's like, prove me wrong and like actually standing up and actually rotating these jumps. But Absolutely. She reminds me of an Alyssa Sisney, which is nice to see on the ice. Speaking of Alyssa Sisney, mm -hmm. um, heartbreak for Yulia Lipnitskaya today mm -hmm. in the long program. Uh. Reminded me of Alyssa Sisney's like 2012 Worlds in Nice, the long program, where she just got deduction after deduction. Yeah, that Under my was heart's sad. breaking for Yulia there. Absolutely. Uh, so let me just clarify to all the viewers, if you didn't watch the competition live, it was interesting. So Yulia Lipnitskaya of Russia was skating. She started off with like a triple let's double toe combination, uh, or at least a triple double that, was, that looked like it was planned. So I thought that was odd. Then she barely got off the ice for a double axle, and then it looked like she was in pain, went to her coach, went to the referee as the music continued. For about a few minutes, they stopped the music, and she uh, regrouped herself, tried to skate again. It looked like she was hurting, and she dropped all the way to last place. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Which was probably what no one was expecting. Everyone thought that maybe it'll be a Russian sweep here, but... That was heartbreaking, especially considering that she was the media child back in Sochi. Absolutely. So everyone was thinking, like, she's going to be the next great star. And then it seems like in the last two seasons, um, especially, like, she's been struggling a lot on her technique. And just her, I don't know, her love for skating seems to be gone a little bit. Which sucks because I do like her programs this year. This year, I like a lot of programs this year. I don't know why, but I was actually into that Kill Bill soundtrack for the long program. Same. And she seems to be a good short program skater. It looked like she was back. So maybe it, the biggest hurdle for her is the long program. Maybe it's a combination of mental and physical struggle. Yeah, I hope it's not a severe injury. I hope that she can recover for her second Grand Prix, Russian Nationals, and perhaps Worlds. Mm -hmm. that's, I don't think uh, she's getting a second Grand Prix. I think she had Skate America. With oh, Drew. she did have Skate America. Huh? Yeah, yeah, so this was her one and only. So no Grand Prix final. So maybe she can recoup for Russian Nationals and maybe make the European team. Who knows? Perhaps, yeah. That's going to be a difficult thing to do. <laughs> well, we'll be pulling for her for sure because we. she's growing up right in front of our eyes for sure. So Absolutely. Okay, so let's move on to the next discipline. I actually want to discuss the men's next. So I woke up this morning, right when Javier was skating. <laughs> I overslept through my alarm because I was out late last night, but I did catch Javier's free program live and it was so good. I kid you not. I thought um, that two of his quadruple jumps were triples because they looked so effortless, but he actually completed three quads, correct? Three quads, yeah. Three perfect plus GOE quads, so. 
That's amazing. And actually, I think I always like his program. I think for the short, I want to, I really want to see something different <laughs> than what we expect from Javier, but I'll take it. Um, he had a little bit of a struggle in the short program because he did the not quad. cleanly execute either quad, correct? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, and so, so, but he was able to rally back in the long, and when you land those difficult jumps with positive GOE, those points add up, and you skate away with the gold medal. Yeah, like, for a first competition of the season, three quads, perfect program in the long, kudos to him, because... Usually we, as skaters, we think like that you peak later on in the season, mm -hmm. but it seemed like he was in great condition here and yeah, walked away with the gold medal here. Absolutely. I'm looking at his protocols right now. No negative GOE marks at all. And then if you look at his program component marks, uh, all mid to high nines, even receiving a few marks, um, for tens in some of areas like composition and interpretation interpretation do you agree with that i think it may be too early in the season to be rewarding tens but i'm glad he won well he is the reigning world champion first that is of all. true that is true so i can understand why they're why they would give tens for a perfect program but i personally if i were a judge i would not give tens Early on in the season, I would like make sure that we build up to that. But I think it was well deserved for a clean, long program with three quads and uh -huh. a program. You know, I'll let it slide because there's not a competition in Spain, an international competition in Barcelona this year. So we can give him inflated marks here a little bit if we'd like. I, I'm okay with that. And I think it sends a um, message to the Yuzuru Hanyus and the Shoma Unos. Patrick and Chan. Patrick Chan, that this is the kind of program that you would need to deliver if you think that you can, or if you want to win a world championship. So mm -hmm. I'm not complaining on that aspect, but if I were a judge, I would give them later on in the season then. Absolutely. Right at the beginning. So let's also talk about Shoma Uno of Japan. This is his second Grand Prix. So he was at Skate America, won that. Now is skating uh, um, oh, at Russia this weekend and won the silver medal. Good for him. And he is still going for that quad flip jump. <laughs> That's his signature jump now. So Yes, the landing is sometimes close like it was in the short program. It was a lot better in the long, though. But I'd say kudos for him for not really falling on it that often in competition. Yeah, I'm excited to see how Shoma... Um, not, not Shoma... I, I'm intrigued to see how Nathan will do it because Nathan is also attempting that quad flip now. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how those two go head to head yeah, one day. Uh, we'll get to see Nathan twice in the next three weeks. So hopefully we can see him in the final and see how he compares to the other leading men internationally. But, Shoma's, but speaking of Shoma, Shoma's going to the Grand Prix final with the first and second place here. So congratulations, Shoma. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to see that quad flip once more, perhaps, at the Grand Prix final, so exciting for him. But I think he really wanted to win here. I could tell he really wanted mm. to win here. So it must have been kind of disappointing being first after the short program and then finishing behind Javier. But hey, you are right behind the world champion, so. That's right. And Shoma Uno did not have a bad skate here, even though he was second. Um, if you look at the points, so for the free program, Javier scored 201 and Shoma Uno scored 186. So that Seems like a big deficit where you think, oh, Shoma must have did something horrible. No, he did fall on the second attempted quad, but then he also forgot to do a triple toe to add on as a combination. So, uh, you know, if you look at the points alone, it looks like Shoma probably missed a few things when he really didn't, but still good showing for him. I'm proud of him. I am too. I, and I expect him to get to that those 200 marks by the final, because that's when... The Big Bang scores come up. So Absolutely. Were you able to watch um, the skater from Israel, Alexei Bichenko? So I never got to watch him, but I've always known that he has the potential. Like he's, uh, We know that he has quads, but he's not the most reliable as far as consistency goes. Mm -hmm. So I sometimes question whether I want to put him in like fantasy skating or not. But to come home with a bronze medal for Israel... 
that's amazing considering that we don't expect Israel to win a medal at anything. Absolutely. So, so I watched this free program and that's where he had his breakthrough moment this weekend. It was amazing. The jumps he landed were so spot on. I think he opened with two quad jumps and then a triple axle, nice choreographic sequence. It was really great. And the one mistake he had was on a combination, which was, I think, I believe a step out of a triple axle. But otherwise, it was a moving performance. Do you think that he has potential to perhaps make a run at like top five at world? I'd say he could be in the conversation for top five at Worlds. If he lands the two quads and if he gets a little bit of a PCS bump. If he continues to skate consistently, I think the judges will reward him on the PCS. So. Yes, let's hope. And then do you want to discuss Max Aaron? Because I didn't watch Max skate here. I just see the results. All right, so before we go into Max, can okay. we quickly go into um, my uh, Koliata? Sure. So um, I think a lot of people were expecting him to win the bron bronze medal here because he's from Russia. And um, unfortunately, um, he did not have the greatest of free skates and dropped all the way to fourth? Or was it, yeah, fourth, right, overall? Or is it fourth overall, six in the free? So yeah. he must have really done something wrong in the free skate. Yeah, so it was kind of surprising to see an, an, to not see a Russian on the podium in the men's. But I'll go right into Max because I actually just watched Max right now. Yes, let us know how he did. So he landed his first quad combination. It was a quad double, so quad sock cow double toe. And then he went for the second quad, but it was a step out. But I think he got the rotation. And I think the rest of the program was clean. And... I felt like the, um, because in the beginning of this, like the summer, when I first saw the Lion King program, I thought that the program was disjointed as far as the cuts went. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who the hell cut this music? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about my language. Oh, it's okay. Uh, but I, um, I think that it's smoother now. And um, the program was a little bit more cohesive. And he performed the jumps. So I thought it was well deserved. For okay, places. is it smoother because they made a change to the music, or it's growing on you? I think they made some changes in okay. the music because before it was like "Circle of Life" was in the beginning, and I was like, that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> is there and, still uh, that techno portion that threw me off? Yeah, it's still the techno portion is still there, but I think that's when he actually comes alive because okay. he seems to be enjoying that more. So if I were his team, I would especially for the Olympic season, find something that suits his personality. Because you know what he could skate to? That kind of techno piece that Brian Joubert skated to for short program for the Olympics. Do you remember that was? Sandstorm or something yes. like that. Yes, I think that would work well with Max. Like In the summer, when I heard he was going to do Lion King, I actually thought that that could work You know, in my mind. I was like, I know it sounds cheesy, but I could see it working. Then I saw it, and I was like, oh, this does not work. So... Hopefully it continues to improve later on in the season. So Max Aaron, look up the music sandstorm. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and he respects Brian Joubert as a skater. I think they have a lot of similarities. And that's not something, you know, to be um, taken lightly. Brian has some accomplishments that, you know. And Brian worked with Alexa Yagudin a little bit. So I would have Max's team kind of like reach out to Alexa Yagudin and see if they can do anything for him because... Alexia was great. Maybe we can make Max great as well. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so the next segment is going to be dance. Now, this is where I'm glad you're on my video with me because I did not follow dance. I saw the results, and the plan was to, but I lost track of time. So the winners are the Russian team, correct? And they yeah. were actually second after the short dance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, I'm not an expert at ice dance. I just want to let all the viewers know. Um, I've been getting better at it because my friend, um, our friend, Nicole, has been educating me on this um, discipline. Um, but going into this event, we knew what the podium was going to be. We just did not know which place they would be at. Mm -hmm. Or at least that's what we were hypothesizing. Yeah. 
So we knew it was going to be between the Russian Barbarova and Sol Soloviev. I hope I'm pronouncing these names correctly, people. So excuse my horrible Russian, I guess. Um, Chalk and Bates, and we were in Poche. So we knew that they were going to be on the podium somehow, but we did not know where they were going to place. But um, so at this event, I believe Chalk and Bates won the short dance. That's correct. So um, right after they won the short dance, I actually looked at the protocols for the short dance and noticed that the second mark went to the Russian um, team. So I immediately thought, okay, this is interesting. And I feel like the Russians might win the free dance and win overall. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were doubting me because they were like, Chalk and Bates, like, look how they performed just a week ago at Skate Canada. And politics where, are on their side. Yeah. And I was like, I still think Russia can come come home with the gold medal here. And um, I think I proved them right by predicting the Russians here. Um, I'm not a huge fan of their programs by any means, but I felt like considering that Matt, Madison Chalk and Evan Bates did make a mistake on the Twizzles, mm -hmm. I believe, um, I thought that they act the Russians deserved to win here. Well, the Twizzles are not their best element, huh? It's not, yeah. And I think Tessa Virtue and Scott Moore also struggled with their Twizzles, so I think it might be the battle of the Twizzles this season. Oh, interesting, yes. And then, what did you expect from Andrew Poge and Caitlin Weaver? So I love them, mm -hmm. and even last um, season, my, one of my favorite programs of last season was actually the Bitter Earth Free Dance. As cheesy as that might sound, <laughs> it was my, one of my favorites. Um, <laughs> So I like them, but I feel like the judges are going to continuously um, mark them lower n now that Tessa and Scott are back. So, How big of the gap is it from their total score here to what Tessa and Scott got in Skate Canada? I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. I'm, I oh, wish sure. I could tell you, but yeah. Let's I'm see not. here. Their total score here is... 178 and then the russians in first place got 186 so even that difference is pretty telling enough on where caitlin and andrew stand internationally yeah like i want to see them do well I, I i find them very appealing on the ice they're a very attractive couple um, they look but good it, physically on the ice yeah it's just unfortunate that the judges are slowly starting to like slip away from their favoritism i guess you can mm -hmm. say but they all had rush like all top three had some of, somewhat of a Russian influence on them. So, which is why we were like top three. <laughs> some you had have some Russian politicking right there. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, and if you all didn't know, I'm not doing fantasy skating at all uh, this season because I struggle with choosing what I think will happen and what I want to happen, which are usually two different things. So I decided to take the stress completely away and not do it. Instead, I can watch you all you know, be on the edge of your seats all season long <laughs> after each competition. Yeah, ne next week is going to be tough, people. Who are, anyone who is playing fantasy skating, good luck, because I'm having a hard time with those predictions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we ready to move on to the next discipline? Of course, yeah. I, again, apologize that I did not know much about dance people. Oh, don't so. apologize. People are going to be happy that dance <laughs> is being discussed in my videos. <laughs> okay, so Aliona and Bruno of Germany... Won the gold medal here. Not a perfect skate from anybody, if I must say so myself. Did you watch the pairs live? I did watch the pairs live. Yeah, that was, it was, that was interesting. <laughs> there was a lot of shocking things that happened. So do you want to start off with the winners, Savchenko and sure. Russell? Sure. So the main things I can remember, so they recovered from the short program because they were second after the short, mm -hmm. and then in the long program, not perfect, but they did enough, and they capitalized on the mistakes made by others. I think some of the major mistakes that still happened was they went for a throw triple axel, and it was only um, <clears throat> marked as a throw double because she opened wide in the air towards the end um, of that throw jump. And then at the end of their program, out of nowhere, <laughs> went for a throw, throw quad one. south. Cal. And I think that's an interesting choice, but I was reading the Twitter feed with the hashtag and some other people were saying that maybe it's a good thing to put it at the end because 
then it's a big element that doesn't affect the other elements and they get points for the rotation and I understand that too it's just still shocking for me to see at the very last note of your music <laughs> I was thinking the same thing I was like why are you putting a qu throw quad sao cow at the end of like right at the end of your program yeah if anything you would I think you would want to rest up and do it in the beginning so you can do it correctly you know yeah, so I was kind of shocked. It kind of reminded me of Carolina Costner's like triple sawcow at the end of the program. Yeah, where, and, and it was very inconsistent for her, and she always ended up falling on it. So I think they might want to go back and like figure out if they can put it somewhere else if they want to land it cleanly. Because I think that right at the end of the program, your legs are tired, but maybe they're going for rotation. I guess you can you get full mark like you get the points for the throw a quad minus the GOE, right? If you get the full rotation. Absolutely. I mean, whether they were totally clean or not is a different issue, but they did what needed to be done. Their free skate total was 138. And then, you know, the Russians were 128. And, yeah. you know, there's an so edge component-wise as well. Yeah, so I just don't want to see them get injured before the Olympic season. So this is... I hope that they know what they're doing. That's all I can say. <laughs> Absolutely. So... The Russian pair who ended up winning the silver Abiyako. medal overall. Yeah, that's right. It's Natalia and Alexander uh, Enbert. Yeah. They, I didn't think they were going to win the gold medal, to be honest. I thought they got lucky in the short program. Home ice advantage. Home ice advantage and the fact that other people made mistakes. Yeah, but they even made some big ones in that free skate. The main one here being... Um, the side-by-side -side triple sow cow, and they did the worst thing that you could do as a pair skater where the jump didn't even go up, so you get zero points for um, Natalia, and then Alexander attempted it and fell, so you get no points and then a minus one deduction, which is like the worst thing you could do with the system in pair skating. Yeah, that was tough, uh, but it, it shocked me that they were even in first place going into the long, because I was like, I don't, I never heard of them until... T Today. I've seen them before. I like how they look on the ice. I think they're a good pairing Trying. for each other. Yeah, because I was thinking like the team that finished in third was going to be the top Russian, um, Estokova and Roganov, because mm -hmm. they've been on the scene longer, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Russia definitely played its cards correctly here, getting two people on, two pairs on the podium. So. Yeah, who don't have a lot of international exposure at a high level. And because Natalia and Alexander, I don't think, are on their way to being a top Russian team just because they did a planned throw double axle. I mean, that just doesn't get you as many points. Are they working on a triple axle, maybe? Potentially. It didn't look like it looked very planned as a double. So if they're planning for a triple, then sure. Maybe they'll be part of the conversation at Russian Nationals. Yeah, we'll definitely see because I think the Russians have three spots. So. Mm -hmm. I speak. Lucky them. <sighs> Everyone <laughs> I knows I want the U.S. pairs to have three spots. One day. Okay, so the bronze medal finishers here, you're going to have to talk about them because I didn't watch them at all. Okay, so Ostakova and Roganov. That's correct. Hmm. I'm trying to recall because this was like early in the morning for yeah, me. It looks like their free program was relatively clean. I'm just going off the protocols. Minus GOE on the opening triple loop and then the double salad, double toe combination. So that's where their points got kind of deducted, like because they were doing like doubles. I'm yeah, and then lower PCS marks. So high sevens. Did they have higher PCS marks than um, Zabiako and? And Bert? No. No? Um, they got low eights. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if that pair wasn't exciting enough for us to talk about, then let's move on to somebody else who is. <laughs> so fourth place finishers here were the Italians, Valentina and Andre. I actually had them on a medal I, I, when I was doing my fantasy skating because I was like, maybe their programs will excite the judges because the short program was exciting and the mm -hmm. judges really not the judges the audience was really supportive um with them so i was hoping that they could they skated relatively well in the yeah. long program too so um i was kind of surprised not to see them on the 
podium. I but... wanted them to win bronze. Actually, I think uh, people on Twitter had to correct me because I thought that because they were first after they skated in the free program, I thought only two pairs were remaining to skate. So I was like, they're on the podium. And people were like, Justin, no, there's three more skaters. I was like, I'm the <laughs> worst at this. <laughs> <laughs> Live tweeting gone wrong. There I know, you go. right? Um, but let's see, Valentina and Andre, I like both of their programs as well. I love how sexy Valentina is on the ice. I love the close-up shots of her makeup, her eyeliners on point. The short program was really a breakthrough for them to be totally clean technically, put them in a good spot going into the free. Um, that long program, though, started off pretty badly. They had a fall on the throw triple twist, not throw triple twist, so triple twist, and then had some issues on the side-by-side -side jumps immediately after. But they they did not let that affect the rest of their program. And in fact, I think their program continued to build after those first two mistakes, which is really hard to do in skating. Agreed. And I think they both um, have great personalities on the ice. Absolutely. So that... That makes the audience and the judges hopefully um, reward them in that sense. So, yes, I thought they did well here to place fourth overall. So, mm -hmm. but it's what was more heartbreaking? Absolutely no. You know what was more heartbreaking was the Canadians who placed in fifth here. Yeah, that was <laughs> heartbreaking. That was heartbreaking. Julianne and Charlie. I think most of my viewers know this. They are my favorite Canadian pair team, and probably on par to be my favorite pair team overall. I don't have one yet, but I may in the future. They're just so happy and a joy to watch. Their connection with each other is great. And they just came off of a win at Skate America. Now there's it's a big question mark on whether or not they can make the Grand Prix final. Yeah, this fifth place finish here definitely does put them on the bubble as far as the Grand Prix final goes. But I think they'll make this the world team. They'll make the world team. Mm -hmm. But Grand Prix Final is on the bubble. Unless someone probably like withdraws and they're like... They'll probably be an alternate. I'm pretty sure they'll be an alternate. So um, we will see. This is not their greatest showing. But I hope that they can go home happy and just train really hard and bring yeah, it. I'd like, say a big struggle for them this weekend were the side-by-side -side jumps. And then um, the throw triple jumps. You know, she's two-footed quite a few of those landings, so I think they need to go home and just rework some technique or tweak it ever so slightly so that they can perform under pressure or under fatigue from traveling to Russia for a competition. Um, but I have confidence that they'll do what it takes to be back in perfect form later this season. And I'm not sure if you noticed this, but so they made mistakes in both the short and long program, but they still looked happy to skate. I, I think, think that's, that's a very important so cool to quality. See. Yeah. And I think that's what impressed me when I first saw them on the ice last season. They always seem to be like happy just on the ice and then happy once they get off the ice. And when you love skating and that comes through, I think that it doesn't really matter the marks or your placement. So mm -hmm. even though I think they want a medal, I'm pretty sure they want a medal. Like, they Absolutely. seem to love what they're doing. So. And I'm not sure if I said this in my Skate America recap, but I do love their programs. This season, I think it adds you see more versatility in their skating. I think the programs that they skated to in the past suited them well, like as they're more like cutesy. And granted, I like those pieces of music better. The uh, music choices for this season brings out a new part of their skating. Like seeing facial expression from Julianne is so cool because I just don't expect her to be able to emote that way from the face besides a smile and a cute face. Yeah, I expect them to carry on that great Canadian... Legacy. Canadian legacy mm -hmm. after 2018. Mm -hmm. because, because in some ways, I like them better than Megan and Eric, but that's just me. Yes, er, Megan and Eric are bow down to them. Very respectable for what they achieved and accomplished in the sport. It's so amazing. But there's so many great Canadian pairs, so there you go. That's we true. All right, did we cover everybody? Everything? I believe we did, yeah. Oh, cool. That was a fun 40 minutes, Kanishka. Thank you so much for doing this video with me. Of course. And if you guys have any questions or comments, I'll respond back. So leave them. Most people comment. So I will do the same. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for viewing. And I'll catch you again next week. Thank you again, Kanishka. Of course. Hey, bye-bye. Bye-bye.